envisage a scenario in which Britain leaves the European Union. So I'm just wondering how it would then work when it comes to really important international um, summits. Um, an example, current example, the ongoing, if you like, tussle between <coughs> Russia and European Union, European Union states. We would surely be then seen as someone who doesn't actually have a place at the table. Because we're not because, because we we're not actually we don't. Who is, because who because is we're not actually a member of the European Union anymore. This I mean, is, that, this that would be catastrophic, so wouldn't it? For, for, on a whole yeah. Just, just going back to the Polish question, one point that Monica uh, made was the amount that polls generate, 2.5 million, I think yes. you said. Um, Andrew, just your thoughts, please. Yes, so uh, the, I think the position of polls post-exit um, would depend on the conditions of exit and also on the position of Poland post-exit. So both of those things would be important. There are two main scenarios for UK exit from the EU. One would be if we were to vote no in a um, referendum uh, in, um, say, 2016, probably. Uh, the other would be if we were to vote yes in a referendum in 2016. Both of those would probably lead to exit for the UK from the EU. The main reason being that um, it's unlikely to be sustainable over the medium term for there to be any kind of EU membership which does not involve being a member of the euro. And Britain will not choose to join Europe. The conditions under which it might be sustainable for Britain, for Britain to continue being a member of the EU without being the Euro would be if there were other significant member states who themselves were not members of the Euro. The only one that really counts on that of the people who might not join is, is Poland. Right? So if Poland were to continue and to, if, to choose eventually that it didn't want to join the Euro at all, but given that it's, already, it's currently committed Joining, but if it were to choose not to join, there's the outside chance you could then have a two-tier kind of structure within the European Union with an ongoing second tier. As things stand, by around 2020, there'll probably only be four or five uh, non-Euro uh, members of the EU, um, and that's committed to going down to only two in due course. Being the Euro is the currency of the European Union, so over the long term, as things stand, we should not expect there to be any viable condition of, Euro, of the EU membership which doesn't involve being in the Euro. And I would expect that um, sometime between 20 and 2025, 20, the residual members who are not, who are going to choose, um, if they do so, not to join the Euro, would be folded together with the European Economic Area countries, the uh, Norways and so on, uh, into a new kind of outer tier. Under those kind of conditions, it would be likely, I think, that free movement would be retained for the reasons that were set out before. Because one of the fundamental freedoms of the single market is free movement of persons. And so although there would be some impact upon citizenship rights, um, there, there, there wouldn't, uh, in EU citizenship, would probably in due course be restricted to members of the single European state, which would be formed out of the Eurozone. Um, but, uh, but by and large, the free movement would continue. Uh, under the other scenario, though, in, in which the UK uh, chose to leave the EU um, off its own bat, rather than as it were being folded together with the EU, I think it is very likely that that would be followed by some restrictions on freedom of movement. Um, if, uh, partly because I think one of the likely scenarios for the UK leaving the EU in, in a referendum is that the Conservative leadership decided to, in the end, that it was going to advise for a no. Uh, I think that that's the most likely scenario, is that they would say act uh, for to EU membership. Partly because they've said that they want to have a fundamental renegotiation of the position within the EU. They themselves have said that one of the key aspects of that is restrictions upon free movement. David Cameron himself said that that was one of the things he was hoping to get. And that's totally impossible. It's completely out of the question. Uh, so because they've set things up in that way, that you should have that kind of renegotiation and they won't get it at all, I think the, ch the odds are that in the end, the Conservative backbenchers will not tolerate a leader who takes them into a referendum campaign um, saying that they should vote in favour of staying in the EU without any kind of fundamental renegotiation. So in the end, I would expect the Conservatives to go uh, with um, saying that we should leave. Under those kind of conditions, because you're leaving, partly because you want to restrict free movement of labour, you should then expect that once you leave, left, there would be restrictions on free movement of labour. Um, the restrictions in place probably wouldn't target uh, anybody in particular, they would also, uh, so that would probably mean that there were some restrictions on um, Polish uh, movements subsequently, unless of course the Poles themselves decided that they didn't want to be members of the single European state in due course, so that, that's of course a scenario that remains open as well. It would also depend very much on what Britain did next, because I think it's far from obvious that the thing that Britain would want to do upon leaving the European Union would be simply to have another kind of European engagement. 
Um, I don't see why that would be that interesting a thing to do. I think you would leave the EU in order to engage with somebody else out in the rest of the world. And that may well involve free movement with them. So it could be that we end up with free movement arrangements with the Canadians or Australians or somebody, which would create new opportunities for movement for Poles in the UK to go to other places in the world in due course. So there's that dimension of things as well I think you should bear in mind. Okay, Andrew, thank you very much. If I could ask the roving mic to find Madame Pat, because we've been talking about some really large concepts here, but this is a question that relates to something very everyday and something that will really bring it down to what will affect well, the future. Let's talk about the children. Madame please. Well, we should turn to the second most spoken language in the UK. So the question is, uh, do you think that students should be offered an opportunity to seek A-levels in Polish? And if so, what will you do to ensure that Polish is offered as an A-level in Great Britain? So that's um, Amanda speaking here from the Polish Education <coughs> Society. One of the examination boards that offers the Polish A-level has said that they will no longer offer it for various reasons. Um, and it's not just the only language, but there are a few others. But in terms of for this debate, it will be interesting to know what our panel think. think. Um, Roger, starting off with you, so the Polish A-level being scrapped in the UK as of 2018, your thoughts? Um, well, I think Daniel answered the question in his introduction when he welcomed us here, and I wrote it down because I thought this would come up. He said it's important, he's learning Polish, and his daughter's learning Polish, and, he, and Daniel, you told us it's important to speak Polish if you want to do business in Poland. Well, why on earth would we want to restrict the number of people in Britain who can speak Polish if we want to be a successful country in the future. What, I mean, what, what, why on earth would we do that? Uh, I think it's uh, a very, very short-sighted uh, policy. I think it's wrong. I hope it's reversed. But for me, it's the latest in a whole series of assaults on rights of EU citizens in this country. Remember people tried to stop Bulgarians and Romanians coming here to get there uh, without, their, without a work permit. Incidentally, not a single work permit was refused to remain in Bulgarians between 2004 and 2015. I don't think many people know that. We then had the thing that, okay, we've got to allow free movement, but you can't claim benefits. And everybody started saying, uh, you know, you can't claim benefits as soon as you get here. But you've never been able to claim benefits as soon as you get here. Just one more, one more uh, bat to beat the EU citizens with, because they played well politically. <coughs> then we had the, you know, access to the to the health service and public services. Pressure on public services, you know, the problem of immigration in Honiton I referred to <coughs> earlier on. There are issues to do in areas of high migration. In fact, New Europeans are looking at this. With meetings we're holding uh, in Lincolnshire and Edinburgh and so on. That do need to be improved for the planning, but the idea that you know the, the, the immigrants are taking all the school places is, is nonsense. And I think that also has has, has calmed down recently. So, that, 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 you know, uh, so this is the latest for me. This is the latest thing. This is the latest version of this. You know that uh, all right. Well, if the poles have to stay here and we can't take, uh, we've got to treat them like everybody else. Uh, <laughs> at least we're not going to pay for them to have their own language. And in fact, Nigel Farage had said. Not only that Polish people shouldn't be allowed to learn Polish in this country, but they should pay for state education. They should pay for state education. And it's just the same old thing playing over and over again. Find somebody to blame, find somebody to hit on, because there's a culture of, of fear and, a, and ignorance in Britain which can be fished in very well for votes, and there's an election coming. So I think it's completely wrong. I think it's very short-sighted. If it happens, it's very sad for the Polish community. We in Europeans will try to defend it. Uh, but it's very short-sighted for Britain because you know, we, we need to be able to build relationships. And again, it comes back to the point I made earlier on. You know, yes, get the politicians to do something if you, if you can about this, but also talk to people in your communities make people understand how important this is, how valuable it is, not just for people who are going to learn Polish, but for Britain, because it makes it easier for us to succeed in the future uh, if we can uh, have these skills that we will need in a very tough, competitive world. Roger, thank you. Um, it's not just Polish. There are other languages, but um, uh, Polish is the one with the highest number of people taking the Polish A-level that is going to be scrapped. Um, 
Daniel, will you be trying to <laughs> squeeze in the Polish A-level before 2018? Well, I'm sorry, could I just say, uh, could I ask the panel kindly to uh, have a bit shorter question, because we're, I mean, shorter answers, because we want to get a few more uh, questions in. Thank you. Um, Yes, and as the chairman of the All Party Group for Poland, uh, we have written to all the members of the All Party Group for Poland, highlighting our concerns about this. His Excellency Mr. Sokolov um, spoke to me about uh, his concerns about the uh, prospect of the Polish A-level being withdrawn. So we are making very strong representations to the department, and um, my office are tabling various written parliamentary questions. If anybody is interested in uh, seeing our progress on that, we'd, we'd be very happy to share. But can I just come back very quickly to what uh, the former MB for Wimbledon said? I mean, it's just far, far too simplistic um, to try to um, uh, criticize anybody who is trying to attempt to uh, understand and engage with the British electorate. The Br British electorate is very wide and uh, has very, very different views. But as part of democracy, you have to try to understand the broad brush of people's views. And no matter how extreme or how different their views are to your own, in a democracy, you have to listen and understand them. And, and one of the things that, that there is a problem, and that is the depopularization, de if that's a word, of Poland. And whenever I've gone to Warsaw, I hear from Polish politicians their grave concern about just how many of their skilled workers are leaving. I read an article recently about the city of Radom uh, and other places, which is having real problems with the, with the outflow of, of Polish entrants, uh, Polish citizens. And lastly, of course we are going to try to renegotiate certain things because the, ex the existing rules are upsetting some of our constituents. And let, you, let me give you a classic example, which some of you will very strongly disagree with, and some of you will be angry with. But it is a debate, nevertheless. And that is benefits for children. We believe uh, that if you are here in the United Kingdom, and you are working here, uh, you ought not to be sending benefits that you are receiving back to your home country. Those benefits are, are meant to be for children in the United Kingdom. And we will try to renegotiate that because of the strength of feeling on this issue from our constituents. They expect the social security system to be looking after people in this country, not for people in other countries. We're just going back to the A-level, so... <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you say you've spoken to various departments. What has the uh, department for education? Well, we are, getting, we are getting official written parliamentary answers uh, this week. Uh, we have tabled, I think, eight or nine formal written parliamentary questions on this issue. Uh, the Department of uh, Education is going to reply to us, and we will be publicising those through the Polish Professionals of London Association. Well, they said it's not their issue, it's up to um, AQA. Well, when we're waiting for their official re replies, and we have been making strong representations to them. Just one, one very brief one one very brief. Uh, uh, The previous Polish Foreign Minister made, uh, made a reply to this, and he asked about it, he actually said, why should the Polish taxpayer in Poland pay for benefits of, for, of children whose parents are paying taxes in the UK. I didn't understand. Very, very simple. Radek Sikorski said, why should the Polish taxpayer pay child benefit for children whose parents are working and contributing to the British Exchequer? Well, that's Mr Sikorski's view. We have a different view. I wonder whether uh, British children who happen to be in Spain oh. um, and whose parents, or one of the parents, uh, is here, whether they are not allowed to receive benefits as well. I say that they're the Somalis. Well, the, the, so the, uh, children, the children are in Spain, but the, one of the parents is here, whether they receive uh, child credit or not. The, those will be the responsibilities of the host country. Those will be the responsibilities of the host country. I'm, I'm asking whether, what's the, what's the, what's the um, case at the moment? British children who happen to live in Spain or France, but whose parents or one of the parents works in Britain, whether those those children, the British children in Spain, are entitled to, to those benefits or not? Because it's a very similar situation. Well, it's good. Well, but the, 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 this is a problem 
This is the problem. This, this is the problem. I mean, you laugh, but you, you're laughing, but these are issues. These are issues that our constituents are raising with us. And, um, and, and by not addressing them, we are giving sucker to UKIP. Ladies and gentlemen, what I do not want to happen is I do not, UKIP is already on 15% in the opinion process. UKIP have two representatives. They have won the European uh, Union elections. They sent more MEPs than uh, other parties to the European Parliament. I consider UKIP to be a malign and dangerous force in British politics. I do not want to give anything to allow the trajectory which is ever increasing the support for UKIP. And by addressing some of these difficult issues, we hope to stem the support for this rather right-wing radical party. And the other, the other representatives are just deaf. They've been talking about 10 minutes. They've been talking rubbish, frankly, about 10 minutes. Not as much rubbish as you. And, and your argument, your argument seems to be that the, the way that we control UK is becoming like them. No. Your party's policy is to repeal the Convention on Human Rights, to, to repeal the Human Rights Act, get out of the European Convention, presumably get out of, of the court as well. Your policy is to ramp up the rhetoric which, which simply plays <coughs> to the same racist audiences which you keep saying to. And, they, and, then you're, and then you're coming to insult the intelligence of people here and say to them that uh, let us do that or the alternative will be worse. And the absolute irony is the ladies the ladies raising there. No, but the absolute... No, no, but can we just get an answer from James very briefly? I understand Daniel's point about needing to engage the electorate, but actually if you analyse this issue carefully, the same someone who is working hard in this country, who takes the choice for a variety of reasons, their children stay in the home country, that could be for cultural reasons, not least because, for example, the message uh, gets back to Poland, actually, um, it's not very, it, it, the, the authorities in England don't encourage uh, people to learn Polish. For, for example, that could be a reason why a, a, a father or a mother... Well, it may be soon, but yes, to the point, yeah. Okay. Uh, Point being, uh, there's nothing wrong in principle, surely, with a hard-working parent um, having the benefit for their children um, and being able to uh, support their child just because their child happens to live in another, in another part of the European Union. Um, I mean, that's the whole point of European citizenship, actually. But, but shall make lots of accusations thrown at you. Uh, um, yeah, um, no, 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 I think this is the issue with the mainstream parties, I think. Um, the question was about A level, Polish A level. Um, <coughs> which okay, one sentence on the A level. What, it's what, what, being what are your scrubbed by AQA, which is the board, right? It's an examination board. And that was the question. The charity, yeah. Yeah. Um, now, politicians have gone off the tangent talking about benefits. Now, I, I, I'll answer the question. I would complain the Polish island to stay. I did it myself in, in, in 2000. And um, I think it's great. 